Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Right now, the question I'm answering is, what's in the box in regards to this surprisingly heavy board game from Freely Publishing? This is a board game based on the tales, not the tales, just tales from the loop. Um, the art book by Stein, Simon Stallenhog, the role-playing game from Freely Publishing, and possibly influenced by the Amazon TV series. I'm not sure if this came out before or after. The series is based on the books and the other content. So this is from Freely Publishing, which is the same publisher that published the Tales from the Loop role-playing game, which I have to admit I am a big fan of. Uh, you are playing children, kids, uh, in an 80s that never was. As a child of the 80s, this is a game that is close to my heart. Uh, kids on bikes, exploration, disappearing for hours, meeting at the clubhouse, all those fun kind of things. This board game promises multiple scenarios playing kids in the 80s that never was, and I am really looking forward to checking it out. But first, I've got to open up the box. Before I do that, though, let's find out a bit more about this game. Tales from the Loop, the board game. Step into the amazing world of Simon Stallenhog's Tales from the Loop. In Tales from the Loop, the board game, one to five players take on the role of kids who investigate the mysteries originating from the Loop, a huge underground science facility with strange effects on the suburban suburban sorry landscape around it. Just make sure you're home in time for dinner. Tales from the Loop, the board game, is a cooperative experience where all the players work together towards the a common goal. There are six scenarios in the core box with each featuring a specific property of the loop. There's also the mystery island mode, where you get to discover your own mysteries and adventures. So it sounds like you might be able to play through the first six only once, because you'll know the answer, but then there's a way to continue playing the game. Thumbs up for that. This game features an original art by Simon Salahog, which is awesome, as well as expertly crafted pre-assembled miniatures of the machines featured in the artwork. Note, they are not pre-painted. So let's take a look at what you get inside the box. I'm going to cut the shrink and then we're going to tip the camera down. Here you've got my new copy of Tales from the Loop, the board game. All I've done is cut the shrink off. So you're going to get to see what's in this box the same time I do for the first time. All right, we start off with a rule book. Not unexpected. All right, we're going to flip through these rules. That is not an insignificant rule book. Uh, we are looking at 22 pages. It's quite a bit for a board game. Nice, full color, great component summary here. Interestingly, the dice look like they're the same as for the role-playing game. So that's a nice bonus. It looks like you got some standees, cards. Here is something I really appreciate. More publishers should do this. Show me the fronts and the backs of the cards so I know which type is which, so I don't have to sort them. It's like a lot of information's on the cards. Awesome, fantastic artwork here. Actually, the layout is the same as the role-playing game, which is an interesting choice. So single column. Uh, text is fairly small, but looks well laid out. You've got examples on the outside. I love a nice setup picture right near the beginning of the book. So far, this is looking great. you got various locations, how to play the game, and so on. We're just going to flip through this pretty quickly. Uses a dice pool system, so it looks like it may even use a similar system to the role-playing game, which to me is fascinating. You do have to literally be home for dinner. There are rules for home for dinner, and then there's an, uh, an index, and there are some variant rules, including a large number. Awesome artwork, great layout, solid quality, soft cover. Then we have the World of the Loop. Oh, I've actually I've actually read this. Um, this was included in the starter set for the role playing game. No, it's different. It's it's got different artwork. So this is a, for people who don't know the loop. And the backers for their Kickstarter, because this was Kickstarter. It's a lot of backers. So that's cool. Um, and they are, of course, trying to sell the, the role-playing game on the back. Summary sheet. Oh, nice. It's card. Nice bonus. You've got a summary sheet here. And yes, these are the same stats as the role-playing game. So this is a board game very much based off the role-playing game, which is something I actually appreciate. I think that's really cool. That two-sided summary sheet and more than one of them. Bonus. A lot of tokens here. Looks like we're gonna have some dials to assemble. I gotta say, I dig the artwork here. So you can see the artwork on these. 
tokens. And then a couple dials. And we've got some tiles here. Different locations. We have standees for the kids. Kind of an odd choice to use standees for the kids. Oh, I like this ID card. Standees for the kids, but miniatures for the mechs. More tokens. Another standee here of some kind of vehicle. Then we have the board. I dig it. Um, it's got a kind of comic book art style, but it works. Note, this is set in the Swedish version of the loop. Set in Sweden, not the US. Um, the the role-playing game does come with two settings. Uh, what I'll do here is I'll swap over quickly. So I can hold this up so you can kind of see the board here. So it looks like those two dials will be attached to the board up in this corner. You've got various islands this is taking place on. So again, this is in the Swedish setting for the loop instead of the US setting. Which honestly for me, is, it's fine either way. I don't have a preference. I'm not American. Um, it looks like we've got a grid of numbers on the outside edge for generating things. You've got a row for placing cards on the bottom here. Nice solid board. Um, it is one-sided. Box insert bonus. Had no clue this was in here. We got a box insert, which obviously didn't hold these mechs in place very well. But yeah, a nice plastic box insert, including a lid. We're gonna slide these back into the proper spot so you can see how things should look. These don't fit very well. There we go, okay. It's a very tight fit. So where are we gonna start? Let's start in this corner. These are just your little plastic pieces for attacking those dials, easy. And we're gonna go left to right here. Oh, dual layer player boards. Can you see that? Look at that. Right there, two layered. You're gonna put cubes in there and you'll be able to see them. So you have Lena, the popular girl. You have Sasha, the computer geek. You've got Niles, the weirdo. Nils, sorry. Stefan, the jock. Veronica, the metalhead. Clara, the bookworm. Oh man, the production quality here is so nice. Jonas, the hick. And Alex, the troublemaker, one of each of the, the types from the role-playing game. Again, double-layered boards. Nice ones, too, and not warped. Many double-layered boards, I find, when you get them, are warped. These are not. Very cool. Um, we have some stickers. Alpha, beta. Don't know. And we have the dice. So standard six-sided dice. They should have something special for the six. Yes. You have the symbol for the loop on the six. There we go. So your six is a loop symbol, the symbol for the loop. The rest of the numbers all have the, like a, a loop around them with a dot. But the important thing is, I assuming it's the same as the role-playing game, when sixes are successes. You're gonna roll dice pulls and look for sixes. There are eight of these semi-custom dice. You've got plastic stands for the standees. I'm not gonna be able to take those out. Cubes, they're, they're board game cubes. I don't think I need to really pull all these out, but you have orange, black, and white cubes, standard wooden cubes. I'm not gonna, I think anyone who's watching this has probably seen a board game cube before. They're all the same size, they are wood. Toss those back in. You've got hobbit-sized cards, so little tiny cards. The Bison Boats, it's a decoy, may use to be automatically avoid a machine. So you send Robot Bison out to distract a machine. So what we actually have here is two decks. We have decks, a deck of items and a deck of anomalies. Taking a quick look through the item deck, you've got quite a bit of info here. Like you've got hairspray, can combine with fire to make an explosive, can combine with a computer to make parts, and can combine with sharp to make chemicals. I gotta say that's fascinating. Multiple uses for each of these items. Cheap lighter combines with combustible to make an explosive, with battery to make an explosive, or with glue to make an explosive. A VIC-20 computer, that is fantastic. Sorry, I have to geek out on the 80s stuff now and then. VIC-20 computer that can be combined with cables to make an interface, with a battery to make an interface, or with combustibles to make parts. So you can blow it up to make parts. Very cool, there's pocket knives, a low rider bike, 
Uh, your Admiral 64 computer. I guess they couldn't get the, the license to that one. Very cool. This looks fascinating with the, the combine it with things. All right, anomalies. That's where that bison comes in. We got pet raptors, because it seems like maybe your kids, you got a machine arm, you got a brain in a jar. This gets to all the weirdness of Tales from the Loop. So nice looking hobbit sized cards with each with their own artwork, abilities on the bottom. Really interested in how these items interact. That looks really cool. We're gonna put those in here. I'm just gonna keep going around this way. We've got, looks like map locations, huge deck. Like that, it's not a small deck of cards. Okay, so we have a bunch of orange ones. Okay, chores. I'm trying to figure out which side it should be on here. Map stuff. All right, we're going to make some piles. See what we can find here. These all look similar. Watchdogs. Then there's another map piece in here. Maybe I should be keeping these in order. Product recalls, Mara's birthday. So this looks like it's the scenarios. So I don't, I don't want to spoil too much here, but there's a whole bunch of text on both sides of these. They seem to be numbered in order, um, like F6, F7. And so these these obviously are scenario style cards walking you through. They are two-sided. I see additional map details that can be added and so on. So is there somewhere to store these particularly? No. So I'm just going to put those cards up. Um, here you have watchdogs, fire guards, avoid. I have no idea on these ones. Whole ton of maps with locations on them. And then on the other side, you've got location scout. Don't move too much, factory output, and so on. A lot of text on these cards. They all have success or failure. So these are obviously checks you're going to have to make, showing what happens if you succeed or fail. Again, I'm very much reminded of the role-playing game, which is not a bad thing. Whole bunch of chores cards. Again, success, fail. Success, fail, success, fail. So a whole bunch more chores. Then an entire, another huge deck of cards. Looks to me like there's more than enough room here to sleeve these cards if you wish to. So we have a bunch of school cards. Then, I don't even know, a bunch of other light fantastic, the passenger... Electric Bully, more, way more of those map style cards. And then again, with pass fails on the other side for those. So I'm just going to throw those in. School cards, more tests. You got success failure, so stuff happens at school. Lots of funky symbols at the bottom. And then rumor set. Yeah, so here's your scenarios. Your various scenarios here, including the Mystery Islands. So how to set up your scenario cards with nice artwork on the cover. Okay, here we have the, the mecha in the game, the robots. Um, they're two-sided, are they any different? Pair of hell for Mark 79, they don't appear to be any different on either side. So you have the mech cards, they have response cards, it looks like they have hit points or something. What's their types? Wardens, watchdogs. And AMAT 12s, and then miniatures for each of these. <laughs> and I have to assume that some of these were Kickstarter exclusives because there's some empty holes here. Or somehow I didn't get copies of all the mechs. Hopefully that's not the case and I need to write freely. My guess is that this is the retail version of the game, so I don't get some exclusives. Oh, they're falling everywhere. That one's gone forever. All right, that is a very cool mech miniature. There we go. So look at that, with the, with the arm hanging out. Very neat miniature there. So we have two of those. We've got little ones with, looks like, big guns on them. The detail here is really nice. I gotta say, those are some pretty neat minis. We've got the spider-looking bot. The detail on this, look at the legs. Detail on that's fantastic. And then the big ones. Very cool looking mech minis. Again, this is the retail version of the game, not the Kickstarter. There are two that I do not have, which I assume is because this is the retail version. I'm gonna put those back in. And 
And there you have everything you get. It's a lot in here. Everything you get with the Tales from the Loop board game. With a box insert, which is interesting. Lots more room for cards. Lots of extra spots here to put all the tokens once you punch them out. Two layer player boards. Always awesome. Game seems to be very clearly based on the role playing game, including some of the same mechanics, which is very interesting. I'm surprised by that. Lots of cardboard to punch. Awesome rule summaries. Background information for those who don't know the Tales from Loop World and the rule book, which includes six scenarios. I forgot the plastic, so we're going to jump back a bit. Nope, not that way. Literally, a lip spots this fits. It only fits on one way. There we go. Boom. So I don't know if that's really all needed, but... Box part. Tails from Loop. All right, there you have what you get in the box for this rather heavy board game from Free League Publishing. This is the Tales from the Loop board game from Free League based on the Tales from the Loop um, art books by Steinman Stylenhog, as well as the Tales from the Loop role-playing game. What I was most surprised here was how much this appears to be tied to the role-playing game mechanically. You're looking at the exact same stats, you've got the same skills, and you're even using D6 dice pulls to do things. So this very much looks like a board game version of the role-playing game, as opposed to a completely standalone product. Now, I'm not saying you need to own the role-playing game, but I'm just saying the two are much more tied together than I expected. And I gotta say, to me, that's a good thing. Because I love the role-playing game and being able to play, um, pick up and play it, as opposed to needing to find a game master and prepare an adventure or go to a con to play. Being able to just sit down and play a Tales from the Loop scenario sounds fantastic to me. So I'm really looking forward to checking out the Tales from the Loop board game from Free League Publishing. Now, when I do finally check this game out and start playing it, you'll be able to see me talking about it on social media by following me at Tabletop Bellhop, one word, everywhere. You'll also be able to find a review on YouTube and on our blog at TabletopBellhop.com once I get in enough plays that I feel comfortable reviewing this game, which I, I have a feeling won't take long because I'm really looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, you can also support us at Patreon.com slash TabletopBellhop, which helps us to continue creating content like this video. That's all I have to say for tonight, so thank you, and game on.